Here in the US, when you think of the post office, you probably think about the USPS, Old Reliable Red and Blue. Now, not only do they have snazzy trucks, but they're also responsible for delivering approximately half of all the world's mail. Not too shabby. But with the growth of e-commerce, they've got a lot of challenges and things to figure out. So today, we're welcoming in an expert to help us understand USPS, how to use it for e-commerce, and other changes going on. Welcome, Laura Barons Wu from Shippo. Hi. So how is USPS different from the other major carriers that are out there? So there are a bunch of differences, but I think for this episode, what's most interesting is that the USPS is really an expert at last mile delivery. So that's what they're best at. And there is also a law that requires them to deliver to every single household in the US without any surcharges. Some of the other carriers, there are certain surcharges for remote destinations. That makes sense. It's kind of the difference between a private company and something that's part of the government. And so last mile is the is the moment in time from like after a package has traveled its big distance, maybe across the ocean or in a plane across the country, and it's in the city and needs to actually get to its final doorstep. Yeah, and that's incredibly hard to do because it requires a lot of density. You, you have to stop along the way. You have to figure out where the address is. It's really difficult to figure that out. And the USPS is super great at that. So what sometimes happens is there are certain service levels where a carrier like the UPS or FedEx is using the USPS for their last mile delivery. So you get a UPS label, but then the last mile is being done by USPS. Wow, that's a true collaboration. OK, so the USPS is really great at last mile delivery when I'm shipping stateside. But what happens when I need my package to go overseas to somewhere else? Well, USPS stands for United States Postal Service. Right. So when you ship overseas, what happens is that the USPS has partnered with all different postal services internationally, and then they hand over the package to the other postal service to do the del delivery. Interesting. OK, so my package still gets to its destination, but it's a collaboration, and I probably lose tracking transparency along the way. Yeah, there is not going to be end-to-end um, -end tracking. Bummer. Let's talk about money. If I'm shipping more than a few shipments a month, should I be trying to negotiate my rates with USPS? Yeah, for sure. If you're shipping packages consistently and you have some sort of volume, you should for sure try to negotiate with the USPS or other shipping providers. But you can also work with a platform, a partner that does that for you. And at Shippo, um, we negotiate on behalf of our customers. So we've got the combined volume of everyone shipping through the platform, and we're able to get better discounts and pass that back on to the customer. When I was researching rates, I feel like I noticed that the USPS upped their rates in January, but I researched more and they upped their rates last January and then January before that. What is going on here? <laughs> no, you're, you're completely right. The USPS did increase their rates by 3.9% this year on average. Why? But to be fair, like every other shipping provider has been doing the same. It's not just the USPS. What makes them increase their rates? Like, why can't they just keep it flat for me so I can run my <laughs> business? Effectively. Yeah, I know that's not what people want to hear, but when you ship a package, like it's going to require space and it's going to require fuel. And um, because of market costs, because of inflation, like the, the shipping providers just have to make a living. And if, if the costs go up, the prices have to go up. It's a real facts of life situation. <laughs> You're really laying it down for me. All right, so USPS seems to have a lot of different like classes and things going on. There's like Priority, Priority Express, first class mail, media mail. Is this what I need to know? Or like, what are the most important factors to think about before I start shipping and understanding my costs? It's really not that complicated. So you don't need to know all of these names. What you really need to know is like what you're trying to ship, how big is it, um, what are the dimensions, and then how fast do you want to ship it. OK, because USPS is using the dimensional weight system for charging? Yeah, for sure. They use dimensional weights. And um, every, every shipping provider calculates dimensional weights differently, so you can look into that. Yeah, but um, you also need to figure out where you're shipping it to. So the USPS has different zones. They're dividing the country into like zones one to eight. And then like depending on what zone it's going into, uh, the same box can cost a different amount. OK, so it's really the two factors of like the dimensional weight and then how far it's going, mm -hmm. like how many zones. Yeah. And is bigger numbers mean further away? Yeah, okay. that's it. All right, doesn't sound too hard. <laughs> so let's 
say, for instance, that I've got an 18 by 18 inch package, but I'm trying to ship something super lightweight. How does that affect my USPS rates? Yeah, so that would call for balloon weight then. Whoa, wow. <laughs> great. And what We've is balloon got a balloon. Weight? Uh, so a balloon, like balloon weights are for shipments that are like a big box, but they're very lightweight. So as an example, shipping toilet paper could likely f call for balloon weight. Is this like a newer problem that the world's experiencing <laughs> or has balloon weights been like a thing forever? I guess like not a lot of people used to ship toilet paper before. You know, I feel like I've learned so much about USPS shipping. Like maybe I deserve some sort of like medal or <laughs> recognition of some kind. How about this? <laughs> for real? For me? Yeah, for you. Guys, this is so sad.